Hello YouTube! I am Lightly Salted and welcome back to the channel. And welcome to U-Boat Build 127. In our last episode, you'll note that uh, I had pointed out that since I chose the incorrect time compression management type setting in the beginning, we, uh, we had to go ahead and make a new save. So rather than traveling to Sector BD, we will be traveling to Sector BE. This is very, very reminiscent uh, of our first tutorial on uh, 126, in which I tried to head out to BE and had to go to BD. You'll recall in the last episode, I had uh, had a visitation from Future Salted in which he pointed out to me, not particularly nicely I might add, that uh, I had missed this tab altogether. So we're here in the management tab under tasks, and you'll note that I can choose the tasks for both the officers and ordinary crew. So what I'm looking at here, uh, it seems to be a relatively straightforward uh, rotation of an eight hour shift. So as people come awake and on shift, their first idea is heading for the engines, followed by helmsman, which apparently has something to do with navigation. I've yet to determine what exactly that does. Um, the depth steer station and observation seem to share, seem to share uh, priority for the regular crew. So this tells me that um, anybody who's not on the engines and or uh, steering the boat, essentially, is going to be keeping an eye on our depth and keeping a lookout. We follow that up with observation again, but uh, I would assume that this deals more with helping Mr. Hagnow at the navigation station. Power switch tasks. Now this tells me that our crew is half of their time as likely to respond to tasks I give my officers in the tab screen when I want them to turn on or off machines. Following which we have work in the galley. Uh, I'm assuming this is the general tasking of cooking for the crew. And then cleaning. Cleaning seems to be a fairly low priority. Uh, I can relate. Cleaning stations when you're at sea tends to become fairly mundane as time progresses. Now this here on a signed aspect, I believe this has to do with the fact that if I added sailors specifically to the tasking, their names should appear here. So let's assume I wanted Mr. Schmidt, Mr. Hoffman, Mr. Vogel, Keller, Peters, and so on on a single shift, they would all appear in that list. I see no reason to mess around with this. I'm sure the crew has a very efficient way of performing their, performing their tasks at sea. So we're going to go ahead and leave this as is for now. Uh, you'll see I made a few changes here to the to the tasks for leaders. In that Mr. Watcher, in his, per, in his performance of torpedo duties, will now prioritize warming existing torpedoes over loading new ones. And this is what I prefer. If I've found that I've run into a target or a convoy even, and I'm... I'm trying to come up with a plan at taking pot shots at it, I find having that warmed torpedo is usually a higher priority to me than refilling tubes I've just fired off. And again, I'm assuming that I can change this as per usual. If I see him warming something and I'd prefer he was loading, and vice versa, I can make that change. Uh, we've set up Mr. Osterman as our medic, so you can see here that his first and foremost priority is healing the sick, followed by his readyman duties, and then, of course, working the hydrophone for us. And like in the last video, I've gone ahead and used our skipper as my test subject as to the effectiveness of scheduling. Mr. Graf comes online at 0700 and works until 1900, at which point he is on his anything time. So we'll see how that works out for us. We have our full complement of 18 sailors aboard, which means that I've split them into even shifts of six apiece. We also have the added bonus that it's daytime with us leaving port for a change, as opposed to the terrible, terrible darkness that it normally is when I set up my boat. Ordinarily, I would put the skipper to bed at the moment, since I don't really need him keeping a lookout while we're leaving the harbor. But I'm very interested to see what's going to happen at 1900 hours, just here, see if he gets himself down, or if I still have to tell him to go to bed. Mr. Osterman, however, I do not need him on the radio, as I'm sure HQ has nothing very important to tell us since we can still essentially see the docks. As far as the time compression goes, if I bring up my map screen, you'll see here down in the bottom we have something completely new to us. We have a clock in the middle here that tells us the time of day, and we appear to have the forecast of the day. What This seems to me to be saying it is currently sunny with clouds to follow. We have access to a times 12 time compression and a times 48. This 
terrifies me, uh, 1800 times speed, and then we have 6500 times speed. I'm a little worried about that one. <laughs> I'm not sure how much work, how much use I could get out of 65,000 times the speed, but I guess we're going to find out. So I'm going to experiment a little bit right here and now. I know that time compression close to land uh, using the dynamic setting uh, worked a little bit faster than it did in 126. They seem to zip along pretty nicely. However, since I wanted to play with a new mechanic, I went ahead and pulled that up. Can I move this? No, I can't. Okay. Let's see what times 12 does. Uh, okay. Times 12 has very little difference on anything. I mean, it's creeping along. It's moving. Let's, uh, let's crank it up. Times 48 moves at roughly the same speed as times 5 under the dynamic system. So that's something to note. Um, I'm assuming once we get out to sea, we'll have access to these higher numbers. And we do. All right. Hang on to your hats. Let's see what 1800 gives us. Whoa. 1800 is absolutely fantastic at getting us out of the harbor. But again, it's only useful when the game calculates that we are in open waters. As I get closer to the shore passing through here, I would imagine I will lose this ability. Let's find out. And go. No, indeed. Okay. Times 1800 seems to work perfectly well at getting us out of port. That's good to know. As we progress through the game and head off to other ports, notably the Port of Kiel, getting in and out of the Port of Kiel is quite the um, arduous journey. So that, uh, that times 1800 will come in handy. Let's go ahead and see how terrifying uh, times 6500 is. Okay. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's a little zippy, sure. Um, but for getting where we want to go, it seems perfectly suited to it. Now that's an interesting uh, thing to note right there. It is now 8 o'clock at night. And my skipper is still working. So in the management screen under scheduling, we had told him that we want him off duty as of 1900 hours. I wonder if it's because I said anything and not free. So why don't we go ahead and change these squares to red and see if he puts himself to bed. And the skipper is heading off to bed. Very, very good to know. Okay, so let's recap that quickly. In the scheduling tab, I told the skipper I want him to start work here and work until this time. In order for him to leave his post, I had to change the rest of his schedule to free time, not anything time. So let's assume we absolutely want him to sleep until, let's call it 5 a.m., at which point I'll allow him to do anything for two hours and then take over his shift as of 0700. So I'll be interested to see what happens at 5 o'clock in the morning. Okay, our chief engineer is a little on the knackered side, so we'll have him and Mr. Hagnow both get their heads down, as again, I very much enjoy using them in tandem. Mr. Watcher, I would normally put Mr. Watcher on the engines right now, however, he's been busy warming torpedoes all night. I don't really want to tire him out per se i think i'll allow him to continue on with uh, his perceived duties this is another interesting thing here in build 126 if i had taken the engineer away from the engines i would have automatically kicked down into third gear i apparently have done so but the command is staying in fourth gear I don't think that's going to affect anything per se. It's just worth noting that the, the command line where I want them to be did not change. Ordinarily, both dropped at the same time. So that's just, uh, that's just something to be cognizant of, I suppose. Another quick note on this time compression. The 1800 and 6500 seems eerily reminiscent of the times 1 and times 5 from the uh, dynamic setting. I'm not 100% sure how much help this is going to be to me. Uh, ordinarily, yes, it's a bit of a pain uh, heading into port and heading away from port, or if you get a little bit too close to shore, and then you're stuck in super slow-mo. 
I will be interested to see how this reacts when we are close to targets. There are times when the times 5 speed from the dynamic is simply agonizingly slow when you're trying to set up for a torpedo solution. Um, we'll see how much of a difference these make. Currently, I'm not um, blown away by it. Again, it's the times 48 barely moves you. The times 1800 is almost exactly like times 1. And Mr. Oldorp decided to jump back on the engines. Wow. Good man, I guess. Mr. Hagnow did not jump back on the nav, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, again, what I was talking about there. Mr. Watcher, I really need you to go to bed. You're tired. Okay. What was I saying? Yes, times one. The 6500 looks to me to be the same as the times five. So while this is a nice graphic, um... I'm, I'm yet to see a change. I guess we'll find out. Okay, it is 1.30 in the morning. Uh, I'll check back in with you folks around 5, at which point the skipper should be ready to, to carry on his duties for the day. Now that's interesting. I'm sorry to keep, uh, to keep pulling you back without any action. Um, our times 5 speed now only progresses the minutes one at a time. So our times 5 in this screen is going to be... I don't want to say useless, per se, but it's not going to be of very much use. Let's put it that way. Mr. Osterman, you keep jumping on the radio. Hmm. In Build 126, if I told a member to go to bed, they, were or they would ordinarily stay there until I gave them the express order to get out of bed and do something. I'm not 100% sure how I feel about them just simply jumping up to their posts. Um, their scheduling... Under the Management tab, under Tasks, is certainly playing a part here. At the same time, their sleep cycle is set at an 11. I would assume they would prioritize staying in bed. This leads me to think that their 11 in their priority list for sleeping is only, is only active when they, are, when they are building their fatigue bar up. As soon as it hits full, it seems they jump out of bed. Now, where I've changed the scheduling for the captain himself, he has not leapt out of bed, even though he has a full fatigue bar. Another quick note I'd like to make. So, if I take Mr... Whoa. <laughs> Some serious swells going on here. Um, if I take Mr. Oldorp off his station, send him to bed. We drop down to speed 3. But since our, com our last command stays locked in at speed 4... When I put Mr. Oldorp back on the engines, we will automatically kick back into speed 4. My normal way of running the show is I have Mr. Oldorp, backed up by Mr. Hagnow, at speed 4. During off hours or night hours or just any hour where Mr. Oldorp and Mr. Hagnow are tired, I will ordinarily have our mechanic, Mr. Watcher, work the engines for me at a max speed of 3, in order to keep conserving diesel. That's a thing I'm going to have to get used to, where we are going to remain at speed 4 indefinitely, provided I have anyone working the engines and I have not changed my selection on the telegraph itself. So that's something to watch out for. If you're like me and like to play to conserve fuel, definitely something you want to keep in mind. Your last selection is the speed that your crew is going to maintain. Another interesting note when it comes to your time compression. Um... Our times 5 here, uh, which is what we have access to in compartment view or orbit view, it seems to work differently if I'm looking inside the ship as opposed to looking at the outside of the ship. What I mean by that is time is moving faster when I'm not viewing the inside of the ship as opposed to when I am. So let's go ahead and show you what I mean. So it's 4.30 right now. So if I click that there... We can see that it is still 4.30. Okay, it's just changed to 4.31. This seems to be taking something to the tune of, I don't know, 10 seconds or better to switch to the next number. Let's go ahead and time it. We're going to start at 4.33. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, so let's call that 10 seconds, because I'm probably off. Now, when we're on the outside of the ship, like so, we'll wait until that changes to 535, and we'll take another look at it. 1, 
two, three. So on the outside of the ship, it takes three seconds. When I'm viewing the inside of the ship, it takes ten. Huh. That's a little different, isn't it? Okay, again, just something I found and something everyone should be aware of. We are still counting down to when Mr. Graf will be getting himself out of bed and attacking the day. And there we have it. 5 a.m., right on the dot. Our skipper is getting himself out of bed and he's chosen to go work the UZO. So his scheduling seems to be working just fine. We're going to go ahead and switch these to downtime as well. I'd rather him get a full 12 hours of shift in. And again, this is going to be dependent on whether or not it's stormy outside, whether or not his vision is going to be useful, like a fog bank, so on and so forth. But it's good to know that this system does work. So long as you understand what it is you're programming, this seems to work in conjunction with their tasks. If I had given Mr. Graf, uh, let's say, cooking as a 9 as opposed to UZO, it is very likely he would have headed to that station first, since it is anything time. So scheduling works, folks. You heard it here first. All right, we still have a fair distance indeed, uh, 700 and so kilometers to eat up before we get to our assigned sector. So I'll check back with you all in a minute. All right, a quick note there. I just ran 65, <laughs> 6,500 times speed for a few seconds. Um, Mr. Hagnow jumped out of bed, started doing his own thing. Mr. Watcher has driven himself into the yellow, and Mr. Oldorp never moved from his bunk. So now I'm all messed up. 6,500 speed is dangerous. This is... Things could go wrong really fast with this engaged. Um, yeah. So I'm not 100% sold on 65 times speed, uh, 6,500 times speed. We're going to keep an eye on that. Mr. Watcher, please go to bed. You are so very tired. And Mr. Oldorp leapt out of his bed immediately. That is interesting. Let's take a look at the management. So because Mr. Oldorp is designed to do nothing but work the engines, he would not get out of bed because Mr. Watcher was working them. All right, so we've determined that if a station is taken up by another officer, then no one is going to kick them out of their position in order to take it over. Mr. Hagnow, you're going to have to throw off my whole schedule and get yourself down for a bit. Our navigation is 100%, so we should be fine. All right, so 6,500 times speed. Real dicey. Not sure about that one. I think I might stick to 18. Now, see, this I'm not a fan of. I only have access to these tools outside of our normal play screen. Ordinarily, when I run my ship on the daily, I put my skipper to bed when it gets dark. I get him up on the UZO when it gets light. And I can see that here. I don't have to sit in map mode and keep an eye on the clock to make sure I'm worried about the timings. So this, uh, from my personal play style, is not going to work out for me. I would much prefer to have the old uh, times 5 enabled on this screen, so then I can keep an eye on things as they progress, not uh, second-hand information. I gotta say, in this screen, when you're advancing time uh, using these last two buttons, keeping an eye on every officer and the time and apparently the weather, it could be a little much. Um, for this to work, for this time compression to work properly, it looks, it seems to me you would have to take the time to fully plan out your schedule. Uh, every officer would have to have a schedule built in for them in order for any of this to be useful. Once we've explored all the new mechanics, I will be switching the, I will be switching to a game in which I have dynamic control over the speed and see what kind of a difference that makes. Setting up all of my officers to do their own thing will be extraordinarily convenient for many, many playstyles. Many, many people are going to find that fantastic. Uh, I, I personally find it tedious to plan out the day of every one of my crew members. I much prefer to have access to them at the drop of a hat. For my personal playstyle, I'm going to be disabling crew management. Um, it's not something I think I'm going to make much use of. I much prefer having the more hands-on approach. Uh, micromanaging, yes, I can hear everyone typing it now. Of course, I understand that that would be a terrible, terrible thing. But uh, that's the game uh, that I fell in love with. I fell in love with the, the concept of having to manage each and every moment of the day. So, uh, yeah. For those of you with differing opinions who, who feel that the new management system is absolutely the cat's meow or... Uh, 
uh, ad vernacular of your choice. Um, go ahead and hit me up in the comments. Let me know how you've programmed your sailors for their day. Let me know how that's been working out for you. I love hearing from the community on stuff like that. And, and for more of that kind of uh, back and forth on the title, my Discord link is down in the description. We have a dedicated channel on my Discord to U-Boat. So go ahead and swing by and hit me up there if you feel like it. Okay, back to sinking boats and stuff. Incoming wolf pack formation. Okay, we have something new. Mr. Osterman, uh, I would like that toot sweet very much, please. There are no other ships in the vicinity. I don't see any other U-boats. So what is the alert for, I wonder? Okay, this is from Command. Miscellaneous communications. We will be coordinating a wolf pack attack on a convoy. All nearby U-boats are called to travel to meeting coordinates. String of numbers. Convoy is expected to arrive there at seven, on the 17th of January at 1238 from the direction of 30 degrees. Okay, let's put that 30 degree number in our back pocket. So it is currently the 16th. Uh, it's 1030 or so at night. And we've been invited to join a wolf pack attack. Oh dear. Um, 500 kilometers from our current location in a little over 12 hours. Okay, so that's a very interesting mechanic. So they would want us to join in an attack from 30 degrees. So from what, approximately this direction, give or take. So they would want us to come around this way, or even this way, I guess, and circle in an attack from a 30 degree bearing. Now that sounds fun. Unfortunately, there's almost no chance that I'm going to make it there in that short of a time frame. A little disappointed. Uh, that would have been excellent to see uh, this early on in our look at the 127 build. Unfortunately, it's just not in the cards for, uh, for our current mission. All right, Mr. Osterman, let's get you down. Mr. Watcher, same. Mr. Oldorp on the engines, please. And navigation. Mr. Hag now jumped on navigation all by his lonesome. That really is taking some getting used to. Not sure about that one. Again, I really wish I had access to the old times five in this screen. It drives me crazy using this screen to do everything. Okay, neither here nor there. Carry on. 7 a.m. on the button. The captain is up and heading for his UZO station. Okay, so I am liking certain aspects of this. So for personnel like my captain, who realistically is one of the people I interact with the most as I tend to put him on the UZO at sunrise, take him off at sunset. Having him on this schedule is working out very nicely. My other personnel, though, and again, it's probably, it's more than likely because I've built myself a play style over time, their automation is not working out all that good for me. Again, likely my own fault. I've fallen into a habit. But yeah, it is interesting. I'll give it that. All right, we've got something heading directly toward us. I'm going to go ahead and drop us to decks of wash to make our signature a little smaller. We're going to alter our course and see what we can see. Okay, so Mr. Hagnow went to the valves, which I do not have. Okay. Is anybody else seeing this? I'm not crazy, right? So, in the last episode, I had no ability to interact with the valves. But they're there now. The valves are now magically back. Everybody saw that too, right? That's not just me. Okay. Perhaps it was a glitch in the, um, in the initial save. Um, okay. Well, I'm happy about that. I want the valves. So that's, that's sort of my thing. I get a person to head on over to the valves for me. Skipper's getting himself downstairs. Good. Missing workers conning tower. What does that mean? Stations are empty. We don't have any sailors working at vital places of the ship. Sailors performing observations at the conning tower are missing despite our ship being surfaced. We won't see anything around us. Well, no. I mean, no one, no one's going to want to be there. That wouldn't work out very well. Why is there water in my boat? All right. Um, okay. So we've got a bit of a situation. My boat is filling with water because these hatches are open. Oh, God. Okay. 
That's new. That didn't happen in 126. Okay. Uh, Klaus? I'm gonna need that pump moving there, buds. Oh, dear God. Okay. Way to go, fellas. Please, please stop. Please stop. Please. Okay, can we... I'd like to go back to the surface, please. I... Okay. Oh, dear. Okay. Note to everyone playing B127. That is a thing that can happen now. I have... I had never run into that in 126. If anybody has, please let me know. But uh, that's the first time I ever saw people trying to get in the boat while it was already underwater. That's a little terrifying. Okay, well, if we're going to be on the surface, Skipper, you might as well just get back on the UZO. Apparently the game gets mad at me if I don't have people working outside. That's odd. Where's our contact? Is this a bug? Is this a bug? This feels like a bug. She should be ahead of us. Where is our target? Visual contact. So all of that was for... And hey, another sub. This is new. Interesting. So this must be um, for the wolf packs. It seems that I have the ability to order this unknown uh, sub to attack, to act defensively, uh, whatever that might mean, and to escape. Well, can I tell it to escape now? What if I tell it to escape now? Will it escape? Whoa! This is cool. Alright, folks, I seem to have the ability to control which way this sub is going to head. Let's see how that works out for us. Can I be my own boat again, please? Um, um, I would like to be... Okay, now, alright. So if I click this sub, I can start making commands on it. I have to click away from the sub in order to gain access to my own sub again. Well, that's important to know. Mr. Hagnow decided to take a nap in the middle of the day. Mr. Watcher, can you work the engines for me without just deciding to leave your post in the middle of the day? Thank you. And the sub took our command. She is now heading in this direction. That's neat. What if we... Can we just get her to come with us? Yeah. Let's, let's get her to follow us in. <laughs> neat. Let's get to this patrol sector already. Oh, dear. Having that sub close to us really negates our ability to move fast, though. Shoot. All right, sorry, little sub friend. You have to go away because you're making it so I can't go zoom zoom. Did he just turn around on a dime? How fast am I turning? Am I turning faster? So this sub is acting much like an enemy target would, and ordinarily that makes you move as slow as dirt, even at times five. But I have access to times 12 and times 48 inside their visual circle. So this leads me to believe that during attack runs on other ships, I'm going to be able to move and maneuver a lot faster than I used to. Also, notice the turning radius. Our turning radius is tighter. Much, much tighter than it used to be. Good to note for Build 127, your turning radius has been greatly reduced. Good for me to know I'm not making these gigantic swooping arcs of turns anymore. We've got chimney smoke. Chimney smoke on the horizon. We're just never going to make it to the sector. We're never going to make it to our patrol sector ever. Mr. Hagnow does not really need to do any navigating for us. It, it feels like the navigation is dropping much slower than it used to. Does anybody know if that was a fix? I don't remember reading that in the release notes, but it seems like navigation is dropping way slower than it used to. Okay, so... This bug occasionally showed up in 126, where your visual range would pass well beyond a target before it would pick up. So she should be coming up dead ahead shortly. Uh, I would say she's an Empire Tower. This screen's a little different. The button's prettier. This is an example of a freighter that was built using individual, not standardized design. Using data supplied here in calculations for ships that are similar to it visually may reduce 
may introduce errors reaching 20%, at least what I think it's telling me, if I allow my crew to do automatic calculations for me, they're going to just call it an empire class, all right? And they normally do. They often, you'll see in your readout, similar to empire tower, let's say. So this is telling me if I let them do that, I may have an up to a 20% chance of errors? Huh. And again, here, similar to Empire Tower. I know it's an Empire Tower. There's its uh, radio antenna right there. Boop. It's odd that you could get errors. What else is different? The statometer looks the same. The chronometer. Whoa. All right, so our course tool is rotate the error to arrow to visually match the course of your target. Um, I feel like... It's almost a 90 degree, but she's facing away from me a little bit. Right? Yeah, I guess. Okay, sure. Let's try it. Let's just see. Maybe that new course tool is better than the old one. Five kilometers. We could probably hit her five kilometers. Like, if, if I get any closer, I'll probably alert the ship. And we've got warm torpedoes. I, I, I don't see any reason to not just try to take a shot at her. Let's just see if that new course tool works out. Let's go ahead and uh, take a pot shot at her. Hey, this thing moved all the way up here. Look at that. Go for it. Uh, Mr. Hagnow is firing. Uh, Mr. Hagnow is automatically firing at the ship because I wasn't smart enough to remember. I had to specifically tell them to not shoot at her. Crud, now that she's been alerted to our presence, that torpedo is definitely gonna miss. What a waste of a torpedo, though. Will that torpedo hit? Tell me that torpedo's gonna hit. What's within 10 meters? <laughs> that's kind of funny. Even with her maneuvering, that's not bad. I gotta tell you, that new course tool, um, that might work out. I might try to use that a little more often. When you knock the nose off, you know she gonna sink then. Mr. Hagnow, let's center the gun. Good job all around, everyone. How's our navigation doing? Navigation is still at 96%. It is absolutely dropping slower than it used to. By now, I'd be down to the 70s for sure. Okay, we're gonna carry on towards our actual objective. We're a little lighter on rounds, a little lighter on our unbelievably close torpedo shot. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here, folks. Um, I know we never even got to our sector, but uh, we, we found some new stuff. Found some interesting things. Uh, uh, a few things I'm impressed with, a few things I'm not so impressed with. If there's anything uh, you saw on the screen here that I didn't actually touch on, go ahead and let me know down in the comments. Or again, hit me up on my social media down, down in the uh, description. For anybody brand new to the title, uh, you just jumped in, this is your first video, uh, you really have no idea what's going on. My previous tutorial series, uh, while there are some differences in 127, it's almost all worthwhile information. You'll see how everything gets set up. Uh, the base mechanics of the game haven't changed at all. So again, if you're brand new here, you don't know what's going on, head on back and take a look at those. Stay tuned for the continuing adventures of U96. I've been Lightly Salted. Thanks for tuning in. Bye now.